Hello, everyone. Welcome to our class AE 31616. And uh, this is class from School of Engineering and Technology. And uh, we concentrate on a few stuff that we want to do, especially on programming assembly language. So let's go on the deeper on this. Um, one of the things that we're going to, to explore actually is uh, you remember the, uh, the lecture that we did on input out pro programming, uh, which we, we started few of the stuff that is quite important. Like if you can write a program, you can write it is, uh, uh, by words, like explaining what is it's doing. For example, if you want to write a program that will place value uh, one, two, three, four H in a memory location uh, zero, uh, 2000, for example. And this is uh, uh, that's, for, that's the value if you want to place that. You start to move the value to that one and then you end. That's, that's the solution. That's the first solution. But you might, after writing this, you go deeper and say you want to write assembly language, right? You can write a higher language, higher level language, but now here, we concentrate on assembly language. And now you move that number value to that address, and then you, you leave, uh, you, you exit the program. That's how it works. And this program will be presented in machine language as 33F123400. That's how it will be written, this statement. And then this is the exit, right? Now let's go to, uh, to, to what is important first. When you open uh, the folder that I shared you with the notes, you see there is a program called Setup Easy Easy 68 68K. When you click the program, it will ask you if you want to install. When you click Next, you go Next Next. You can install the program. I've already installed, so you need to do that also. And then after installing the program, actually when you open it, when you open the program, this is what you're going to see. You see the first program details file and this is called easy 68 edit assembly language so we are going to use that to simulate and this is the main work of this we have 68k processor in our lab we have two of them but you are main in class so uh you really want to practice at to your home or really practice at a lab place or with your computer of somebody or your friends or something and you want to do it during night anytime that you want so this will give you flexibility because this is it simulates the, uh, the microprocessor that I showed in your lab. So uh, we are going to use also this one for explanation because you cannot use that while explaining. We cannot go there and show you all this kind of stuff, but you can do all the stuff here and you are going really to, uh, you're really going to enjoy this class. Now, how do we do this? That's the question, right? Uh, I, have, I have found very good notes uh, from McGill University in Canada and they're doing this for many years. And they have a, a very good explanation on how 68K works. And uh, we are going to review and do some recap on user registers. We've already discussed them. And also we're going to uh, really focus in some few in memory space. So this is quite uh, important. And then we'll go on familiarizing on how we do uh, 68 assembly language programming. Now, as you remember, we said like a 68K register has has 18 registers. So it has uh, 18 registers. It has D0 to D7, which are eight general purpose, and then address registers in one program counter, one status register, and uh, condition code register that will tell us uh, when we do different operations. So these are the registers eh, which we discussed you know, already in class. Now, each register has its job. We already discussed about address register program counter. We also discuss about condition register, which can be used and accessed by users to see like how the operation that have been done, especially arithmetic operation, how they perform and what are the values. For example, you compare two numbers, are they equal or something like that, that will lead you to do some certain decision. For example, if you are looking for a number which is greater than, uh, there are some of the registers will be set at the condition registers. And this is quite important. Now, when you go down, uh, we discuss also kind of numbering system and we discuss about what is a byte, what is a nibble, what is a word, what is a long word. But here specifically, we mean a byte is a eight bit, uh, is eight bit and uh, word is 32, uh, 16 bit and long word is 32. And we know nibble is four. We already discussed this in class. And this numbering system is known as little 
endium. So we're going to use this and uh, it's, it's quite interesting. And this is the image of what we, we are going to learn in this class. And uh, the CCR, the CCR, the CCR, which we, dis we, we hear, the conditional code register. So this has uh, several, 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 uh, several uh, bit. So it has eight bit, but the first, the last three, they're not, they're not used commonly. But the last five is our interest, the X, N, Z, V, C. So C is a carry bit, V is a overflow bit, Z is a zero bit, N is a negative bit. And negative is, is set when the operation involve produce negative value. Extend bit when the arithmetic is involving greater than 32 bit in size. V is overflow. If there is any overflow after arithmetic, they will be set. Carry bit when you add numbers, for example, one plus one is 10. So zero and then one is, is carried by using carry bit. That's how it works. Uh, so um, we, we are going to discuss this into detail and see like how uh, this is, is going to be done. And uh, the next thing that is quite important and uh, it's well that we need to understand into deeper, uh, into, uh, into a wider uh, thought is memory space of SS uh, process. For memory, uh, the memory space of 68 bit is, is one big linear array of memory location, each of them being able to store one byte, at least one byte, not at least only one byte. The memory is said to be byte addressable. So each byte within the memory has its own unique address and can be access directly. Not that the memory of 68 is not bit addressable, which means that you cannot add, uh, you cannot access that memory by, by bit. That also means that you cannot start reading memory in the middle memory. So this is how it works. So this is the, this is the address that we want. And it goes from 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 up to F, 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 F. So, and this is quite big, big number. Remember it's 32 big addressable. So if you want to know how many addresses there are, actually it's two power 32, that's how it should be work. Two power 32, that's a lot, right? So each, 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 each is storing uh, eight. So uh, 32 bit address. Now look at this. Uh, for you to transfer data, actually you need the address pass of the two bit. So from zero to 31, that's the uh, address bar of 68K. Now, uh, this is just a recap of what we have already discussed. And I really wanted to go through back and forth so that you can understand what we're going to discuss in this class. Now, uh, this class is fundamentally being uh, concentrating on programming 68K. So how do we do it in 60K assembly language? For example, we will study very uh, basic instructions, very basic instructions. And uh, uh, for example, data movement instruction, integer arithmetic instruction. How do we do the logics looking at the numbers and shifting rotations, bit operation, comparison, com uh, and the program control for looping and all this kind of stuff. Uh, when you download this book, which is uh, freely op online, you can, uh, you can study more, but we don't need to go more because it will be beyond of this class. In this class, we are going to concentrate mainly in very, uh, very basic stuff. And these are the basic stuff that we're going to do, right? Are you ready now to go? Okay, let's see how we can do this. Um, these are the main instructions that I want to introduce you. First, move, for example, move certain value, eh? value N, for example, to D1. How do you move D1 to, to L, location memory L? or move uh, content of register D1 to D2 and then store them to D2. Or you want to add D3 to D7, then store it to D7. Or, or you want to add a certain value, eh? N, for example, to D0, which is register D0. Sub, or you can subtract in a certain number from a register D0. Or you can subtract from D1 and store it to, uh, uh, like you subtract, D1 uh, from D5 and store them to D5. Or you compare and look at the comparison. So you remember CCR? So CCR, the Z bit will be set only when it finds out like if they're equal. If they're equal, that will be zero, for example, or one, because they're equal to be set to one. And then compare D1 and D2. So 
to do the operation, like d2 minus d1. And if the z is zero, it's set zero. Zero is set. Uh, if the z is zero, zero bit is set. We're going to see this, how it is done. And then if you want to branch, then it will be checking CCR7, uh, Z. It will be checking bit seven. Was it set? If then, true, do. Uh, branch not equal, CCR Z zero, then yes. So, and we have all these kind of instructions, very interesting instruction that we are going to, uh, to, 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 uh, to do. So now suppose, suppose you want to do very simple uh, operation. For example, to add two numbers. Now come back to this program. So you write, for example, if you want to add, for example, six plus five and get 11. So what you do, you move number six to uh, register zero, and then you move number five to register D1. Remember the numbers actually, they are hexadecimal. So in a six plus five, you remember hexadecimal? The answer will be 11. It won't display 11. To display, you remember? After nine is A and then B. So it will display B. So move the O. After adding D1 to D2, move the values, the results, which is to D3, D2. D2 is Z. This is X, this is Y. Now add, add the numbers and then store to D2. Z plus Y and then store them to D2. That's the operation will give you X plus Y. That's how we do it. Now look at this. If we want to display, we really, we really want to understand how the registers are accessed by our program and how the program is performing. And this is quite important for us to get bigger insight of how a computer basically works. Now look at this. Uh, uh, when you run this one, when you run this one, assemble, no error. For example, if it has error, for example, I forgot to write something here. For example, I forgot that one. When I click, it will tell me, oh, there is error. If there is another error, for example, this one, I forgot something here. And if I, I run it, oh, error. Okay. There is for example, if I forget this one, two, uh, assembly. Oh, two errors, line 12 and 14. Line, how do we write? This is the first line. Look at here. Look at the numbers here. 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 Look at these numbers. So here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, and continue like that. So with this line, which is line 12, there is a problem here. So we change it back to zero and one. And when we press actually project assemble, oh, zero errors, zero winning. So it's working. So when we say execute, it will run a program. Oh, it will open. So here is the addresses. These are the addresses. These are the addresses. So. When you look at the address that we say, these are all the addresses that we say that start from zero, zero, start from here, zero, 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 goes back to FFFFF, which is two power 32. Now, for example, if we start zero, uh, we say the program, please start at address 1000 here. This is the address 1000. And here, please run the first program. This is move, this will be here. Move is 33C, that's move 06, move to DO. That's the explanation, oh. And the addresses here will be changing. For example, I move number six to DO. Look at the value here, DO. When I press O6, so it has executed. Now move five to D1, look at here. Whoa, whoa, it works very nice. Oh, now D1 is five. Now, if I say uh, add D1 to D2, it means take the content of D2 and move DO. This is move, move DO to D2. So this value six will move here. So this will be six two. Whoa, that's, that's good. Now this tell us add D1 to D2. So you take five, you add six, and then you store to D2, which is B, O, B, B, B. So they say to X, when you look at that, uh, that's how it, it works, the program. So you have tested your program, you see the results, and now you are 
you are sure program is working very good. So if you are told to write a program, for example, if a question comes, write a program that has two numbers. This is an answer. Write assembly language program uh, that can run in 68K microprocessor. Uh, write the program that has two numbers. This is the program that adds two numbers. Thank you very much. Now let's go on, uh, explore this good stuff more. Uh, uh, after that, let's look at, uh, let's look at our program here. Here, for example, we have a program here, x equal to zero, assume q, assume q, assume q equal to five. So assume x equal to zero, y is equal to, to five. And then if y is equal to five, execute this. Else, else don't execute anything, go to this one. y equal to y minus six, x equal to, uh, equal to y. Now, how does it work? Look at this program. When I, when I, as, when I run this program, so the first thing actually the program will do, like we we'll start at address 2000, and then it will go on telling me, please move zero. So set X, which is X D1, assume D O is X. So that will be zero D zero, and then set D5 equal to five, O is equal to five now. Now go, if Y is equal to uh, to this one, I want to push this a little bit so that we can see the problem. This is the program we're trying to write it. So if Y is equal to is equal, is equal to five here, compare. So what it will do, like what we said about compare, remember compare, compare, it will take D2 minus D5. And if it's zero, then the CCR Z will be set equal to, one, oh, will be equal to one. Okay, let's see the program. So when you look at this, this is CCR, this is CCR here, that's CCR, X, X, N, not, and then zero, zero, zero. Negative, you see negative, extend, you see X, you see uh, carry over. Yes, so Z here, we expect it to be, to be set because we know D1 is equal to five. Let's do it. Ooh, one. So because it has been set to one and this says, if not equal, exit. Be but because the exit means move to here. Don't execute this, we're going to try that. But uh, because they're not equal, this will be executed. So this will be, if not equal, don't go. If they are equal, take also this one. Oh, really? Let's do it. So it will add the one and so it will be zero. Remember here? So it will change to five. See? And then it will go sub, uh, subtract six out of D1. D1 is this five. So five, the subtract six. Oh, you get negative now, negative one. So it's overflowing. What will be the answer? Look at this. Oh, it has been set. Extend, negative, and carry over. And that's the answer. And move D1 to D2, oh, move this to this, so this will change to, Z, uh, to FF. Oh, that's really nice. Uh, that's the program that we wanted to start. Now look at here, uh, assume this was three or two, for example, two, for example. When you, you, when you, when you execute this program, you go, you set zero, I move five to D1, which is five, look at values here, and then move, uh, check if they're equal, yes, they're equal. So it will go to add D1 to D2, really, it will add, and then place D0 equal to five now, and then subtract two from D1. Look at here, remember X, N, and C were set. Now look at this, look at this. 
this will be y is equal to y minus two, not six. The previous one would brought negative. Look at this. You see, nothing was setting because the operation didn't lead to negative number or carry over or anything that related to that. That's how we, we understand quickly and uh, we can refer this quickly. Thank you very much on that. Oh, it's really nice and uh, I really enjoy writing program. And I hope with this class, you are going to enjoy a lot on writing assembly language. Now, when you look at this program, when you run it, uh, let's look at again. Program counter here will be counting the address. So you'll be showing address. This is the address. So as you move, it will be changing. For example, 002, 004. As you move, it's changing, right? It's changing. Right? You see how it works? You see how it works? That's how it works. It's changing. Oh, so it's giving us, that's, that's the work of program count. Uh, let's look, uh, this is the program that we wrote and tried to run. And this is the explanation on what you do so that you can do reference when you're studying. Now let's look on size of operation. There is nothing wrong with our go algorithm above that we studied. Uh, uh, so 68 or 68. Now assume you write this program, uh, you write uh, this program well, you can see how the operation is. Now moving the values, moving the values, for example, DO to D1. That's how it move, like copy the content of DO to D1. Move DO to D1. This is byte and this is word, word to word. Remember, this is normal, B. It means eight bits. When it's written move dot W means it's a word, which involve two of them. And uh, if it's a long word, the OD one is you add all this kind of stuff. Remember here is zero to eight, zero to 16, and this is the full word. So it depends on the operation and how large the number is. Remember, you need to define this because if you do not define, this is going to suffer a lot. So you remember, you need to be careful when you're writing program. Uh, we already set and looked at our Z, how to set is Z, even if the whole number is contained. So this is explanation on why Z was set and how it is, is working. So remember, this is, is a working program. Now, now if, you, if you really want to focus on how this program works, for example, now assume we want to do uh, more complex stuff, right? Yeah, you cannot just do simple stuff. Sometimes you might want to go deeper and uh, try to uh, study uh, programs that uh, do looping. Because we know in programming, in C, uh, how you study Pascal programming, there was looping, if statement, while loop, and we had do while and all this kind. You can implement that in assembly language. And remember, assembly language, as I discuss, we discussed in class, is below higher language. So from assembly language, you move from a higher, higher programming language like C or Pascal, and then go do, down to assembly language, and then go down. Now look at loops and condition. How do we do that? Eh? For example, you have a problem. How to write a, write a program that calculates the sum of one plus two plus three plus two up to plus n? That's the question we told. When you write a program in C program, it will look like this or Pascal. Like first you start with some, and then you have for loop, you go inside this for loop, and then you write it, right? So that's the, this is, uh, this is what you want to, to do, for example. In Pascal, you, in Pascal, for example, if it's Pascal language, you can write Pascal, add, add two numbers, for example, if you want to do Pascal, add optic Pascal. This is how you write it, right? You begin, you begin, you add the two numbers, you write the output, you're done. So for example, A is equal to this number, and then B is equal to this number, begin, 
and then you plus a and plus you get the answer that's how it works directly in c uh in a, in a, in that language now assume if is is for loop for loop right you remember for loop pascal hmm? remember yes so for loop in pascal this is how you write for loop for i equal to 1 to 10 do this right so it will be adding values one two three four five three right so if you want to do loop looping you write four do this and then and or anything that you want to do it right that's how it works right yes now look at this now look at this program this is what we, what you want to do from one to here and then and then and then we 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 plus all the numbers and then we get the answer uh and then we get the answer of from sum itself so the program will look like this you clear for example the all which represents sum and then put the value n for example if it's five or six or something and then you move the numbers now look at this program when you write it in your program here Yes, this is the program. This is the program that we want, and this is the program. Now, clear? No, this is not the program that we want. Okay, let me see. Yeah, okay, this is the program that we are, we are referring to, right? Now, assume, assume, assume now we want to do this so you clear the all which represents sum and then we move for example we want to count up to six the two holes n n is six and then we start uh, doing our looping by setting i equal to one here i equal to one and then we compare the two and the one the one is i the two is here which is n so we compare n and the one and then branch if higher, branch if higher, branch if higher, branch if higher. So we look at uh, if it's if is the two, if the one is greater than one, branched. So we look at i, which is one, if it's greater than n. No, if it's not, do the loop, do the loop, do the loop, do the loop. If it's yes, you exit the loop, you go over here. You don't execute the two. Start how this program can be run. Look at this. Assemble, execute. Okay. Now clear D1, D, D0. Oh, move six to D2. Whoa, now D2 is six. And then move one to D1. Set this to one. Oh, one. Now compare D2 and D1. Compare. So to take D2 minus D1 and see the values. Oh, oh, so no, it's not one. Actually, it's D1 minus D2. It's D1 minus D2. That's why negative was set and carry over was set. Right? Okay, check. Branch if higher. No, it's not higher. So it just go on doing that. It will add D1. And store it to the sum, which is the which is the O, and go back, and then increment I, and then go back. Right? Compare. It's two now. So two. There'd be two. Two D minus six. Go oh, okay. Set it. Go check. Add the value. So you add the one to the O. With the B three. And then I got one, you increment, add, you increment. Oh, that's really nice. You check, uh, this is, this will be branching, always branch to loop. 
So it will go back, look at that, compare three and six. Okay, so it will go that, it will add, it will add the i and it will become four. And then to continue like that, go back, check. D1, D2, okay, still, still, D1 is small. D1 will increment and then go back to check. D1 still is five, go on, add, check, add, and then increment, increment D1. Now it's six, when you go back, it will compare. Is it greater? No, it, because this one, it will only branch if higher. So it won't, uh, it won't branch for now to go on doing like that to allow. So it will add the value. And then now the O it will be 15. Now, when you go on check, uh, you increment D1 to be seven, and then you branch back here, branch back. See the value? Yes, change it like that. Oh, this is quite really nice. Now, now D1 is greater than D6. Oh, so to go here, to ask, is D1 greater than this D2? Yes, it will exit. Uh oh, it will exit. And it's going to say three to D2. So it will delete six and put three here. Oh no, it will add. Okay, it will add. It will add six plus three will be nine. Oh, this is quite nice. It's quite easy. Yeah. So uh, that's how we do it. That's how we do it. Uh, uh, that's how we do it. And this, we do all this operation because of this, uh, because it's explained here. We have all this kind of stuff that we do, but we, we have more. We have more that uh, you need to understand them. So we're going to actually to, uh, to explore more. When you look at these notes, actually there are different questions that they're explaining and uh, they, uh, they, they explain a lot, but uh, concentrate on basics. So for example, for example, you might want to uh, declare constants, right? This is when you want to declare constants. So when you want to declare constants, you put equal like here, right? That's how we declare constants. Look at here. So everything has a format. For example, now for, for, for operation that we were discussing, eh? BHI, so branch on higher than, branch on lower than. So it depends on the condition that you want to do. You branch whenever it's required or whenever you want it to do. For example, that's the program we were discussing. How do we branch the numbers, right? And how do we loop? the numbers, right? So you see the program is quite easy. It's not complicated program. And uh, for example, this is the program that uh, I want you to do. For example, this program, what it does actually, So for example, here we can do just stuff, simple stuff. We can for example. That's clear. Before. That's the problem. So for example, so clear D0. So this is the program we want to explore. Uh, okay, so. So here, clear D1, D1 will hold count, clear D1. Right, and then go check. Shift one bit to the left. Uh, we know, we know, we know every 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 number in machine language is written as zero 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 one one. Uh, no, 
So now the question uh, here, here, the explanation says like, okay, please, please shift one bit to the left. So if it was eight bit means overflow will happen, right? Look at here. Oh, it will be another number. Be another number, the O, which is zero. Now, BCC, if C is bit is zero, C bit, here, carry over is zero. Test for execution. Leave. Now look at this. No, it's not zero. If it's zero, BCC is zero. BCC is zero. Uh, zero. Test. C bit is zero. Yes, it's zero. That's why it goes to this loop. And then it will execute. Okay, cool. And then it will finish. Take if D, okay, zero. And then it will finish. Done, that's the simple program. So here we have seen in instruction, check if do bit is zero, okay. And then this is repeat loop until D1, it becomes zero. Branch not equal. So you can do different operation depending on, on your interests, right? So that's that's really nice to, to understand. So we can do also nested loops, like you can have loop over a loop, looping over a loop. So you can have four loop, for example, this is Y loop, it exists here, and then you have smaller loops here that goes inside the loops themselves. So it can just be going around. So if uh, repeat for the loop, so if this is repeat two, you can repeat, go through the program. And then uh, that's looping, nested loop. That's how you put, like you have, a, you, have a, you have a loop here, you have a bigger loop here, and then you have a small, for example, I equal to K. Now assume K is a constant number. You can define above what constant it is, or you can set a value here, K, for example, six or something, and then you can go on testing this program. Hey, I leave the work for you to do this. And uh, I hope you can do that quickly and understand how the program works. Uh, if you find the, uh, this uh, lecture is interesting and you want more of this, please let me know if you have comments, if you have questions, please, you can send emails to me, you know my email, and my email will be shared and uh, you can ask the class rep and all this kind of stuff. You can share together and then we can go and learn more on uh, assembly language. But remember, this is our next class. Class won't be on, uh, we won't do Peak Pro. And instead we are going to do Arduino. Arduino is the most famous one now. And it's used for sensors and it's very quite important for agriculture. And for us who are doing agriculture, it's quite important in agriculture research in a gacha, uh, the way we develop uh, systems. And also it's quite important because we're interested also to do a system that interact with sensors, especially on post harvest systems, or it can be irrigation systems. How do you sense the water? How do you do this? And how do you sense, for example, yield and all this kind of stuff? And unfortunately, we don't do that in assembly. Now we have Arduino, which is a higher language, and it's switch and C. So we're going to have basics on C. We'll go through that quickly. And because this class is not more, is not concentrating on how do you write C program language, because you're expected to learn more as we go on studying this kind of, uh, of stuff. Uh, let me know if you have any question. Bye-bye.